my beadwork and my other arts that I do are as an extension of my feelings uh, to what happened to our people. It's, it's my way of putting it out there of who Miami people are and what those arts that were lost. So it's, it's bringing them back. Art historians will note that individual works of art are a window into the heart and mind of the artist. For Katrina Mitten, art is also a window into the past, revealing the history of a people and a culture that once ruled this territory long before Indiana was declared the 19th state in 1816. A descendant of the Miami tribe of Native Americans, Katrina is a beat artist who is preserving an ancient tradition that was common among the Indian nations that thrived in the Indiana Territory more than two centuries ago. I was around the age of 12 when I first started doing beadwork. I found um, just some small pieces that actually my grandmother had. And uh, I looked at the technique by looking at the stitches on the back because the the um, the backing had worn away so I could see the actual stitches and I could see the colors that were used and um, as I say that my um, teachers were the bead workers of the past, those that left things behind. Many Native artists have been fortunate to receive training and guidance passed down from generation to generation. But Katrina did not have this advantage. Instead, she began studying Native traditional arts at family gatherings and museum exhibits, and then began, essentially, to reverse engineer the finished works to determine how a piece was created. There were people in the different tribes further north that had saved, you know, had still been passing things down through generations, but I was not um, fortunate to have that. So I had to start beating by looking at different items that my family had still in their possession. They were small pieces because a lot of that was lost. And uh, I just started looking at how the technique was done. Katrina's studio is located in Huntington and her family lineage in this town stretches back to a time before the village was even established. This house, built in 1833, was one of the county's oldest structures and was the home to Katrina's family, tribal leaders of the Miami Nation during the era of treaty negotiations in the 1830s and 40s. My fourth great-grandfather was Chief Richardville of the Miami people. His uncle was Little Turtle. Uh, Chief Little Turtle was our um, war chief. He uh, was held very highly by other um, leaders of other soldiers, other warriors, such as George Washington and Kosciuszko. They thought very highly of him because he was one of the only Native Americans to defeat two United States armies in battle. The women are held very highly in our, our culture, and my family lineage with the Miami people is through the women in my family. My mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, it goes back. During the Indian Removal Act of 1846, most of the families of the Miami Nation in Indiana were forced to move to the Oklahoma Territory. Because Katrina's family were tribal leaders, they were allowed to stay in Indiana, though they were largely forced to assimilate their culture and traditional ways to the white settlers in the region. Katrina believes that this is the reason many of her native traditions, such as bead artistry, were lost over the years. Her work to restore this traditional art has led her to establish art history programs in the Huntington schools, where she dresses in native clothing and teaches young audiences about the importance of the area's artistic heritage. I started doing programs at schools here in Indiana, throughout Indiana, where I would set up camp, an 1830s time frame camp, and I'd come in my traditional clothing and we'd discuss everything that has to do with arts. This was a chance for the children to learn uh, about our culture. 
Katrina's artwork has been widely acclaimed, and some of her work has been valued at more than $3,000. She has showcased many of her works in museums across the nation, from regional exhibits at the Eideljorg Museum of American Indians and Western Art in Indianapolis, to shows in Santa Fe and the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. Yes, a lot of people don't know who the Miami people are, so I've kind of felt that it's my responsibility with my art also to tell our story to those who don't know of us. So it's, it's continuing the, um, the story of our people.